first, we talk to our man Steve Rhodes. Now, folks, you can check out Steve Rhodes every trading day with his newsletter, Mastering Probability. You head on over to the newsletter tab. You can do it while we're sitting here chatting with Steve. Talk to him. Uh, I think it was a couple weeks ago, man. And we were talking about quite a price tag on this S&P, and we got him back. Steve Rhodes, good afternoon. Hey, Tommy, how you doing today? I'm doing well. How about yourself, man? Doing, doing good. Do you have any skin in the game on the football game last night? You know, I had a little skin on the Chiefs. We got le we got legal sports gambling in Florida now, baby, and uh, oh. I can't go against I can't oh, cool. go against Mahomes, okay. man. I mean, we're watching something pretty cool. As I think, I I knew you know I know you love sports, man. I hear you talking in your show, and of course, some yeah. of my dad's. Um, and boy, just as a sports fan. Quite an awesome game last night to watch in person, man. Just sitting here in my chair, right at my desk. I mean, just pretty cool. What were your thoughts? Sure. No, you know, that's really what you want, right? You want a great football game. Totally. Um, you know, you, you hate going to a Super Bowl. Can you imagine, uh, you know, you pay all that money and then it's kind of a blowout, right? So I know. It yeah. It's worse nice, fear. You know, just, yeah. Almost, just as a sports fan. Uh, totally. Just nice to have a great game, but but you know, and we'll, we'll, we'll obviously we'll never know if that if that uh, point after you know was really the difference because because things would have changed, you know, that that, that block the uh, point after attempt out there. It's San it, yeah, it's amazing. It, it isn't you know? it amazing, Steve, how how they work so hard all year, right? You know, there's so much effort for all the organizations. We know from being, you know, sure. from playing sports, it's like you put so much into it, man. And these small little details, but when you're playing a one-game winner, oh, it's just Four brutal, man. Inches, and maybe. some of the passes, right? Some of the drops, some of the penalties. I found myself saying, "Oh man, is that going to be the difference?" When they had the sure. Chiefs had some tough penalties, man. Yeah. Um, so the whole deal, it was pretty yeah. cool, man. But yeah, it's, great game. it is great game. It is. Uh, you know, I was really following the golf as well. That was going on at the same time uh, because they had delays and so forth. And the golf tournament went into overtime. So oh, cool. You know, I was flipping back and forth, but uh, you know, you and I were too young to have lived through the Roaring Twenties. Maybe, maybe it's going to be the new Roaring Twenties out there. Right. So I thought we'd we take a look back and try to understand what went on then, what might be going on now, what to be able to nice. uh, look for out here. So nice. the the Roaring Twenties that rally began. Well, I've got it beginning really in September of 1921 and lasting okay. for eight years into September 1929. Now, it, we've never seen the Dow repeat this uh, same type of a move. Over a five-year, over an eight-year period of time, and when I when I talk about eight-year period, to, Tommy, it averaged sixty percent per year. Amazing, from, man! I'm looking at that chart. Amazing, yeah. Right, yeah. So um, you know, I, I went back and I went back to like 1896, just trying to find any any period that came even close to this, and we didn't. But the important thing about this chart, because we're dealing with markets here that just seem to continue, as you say, they kind of defy gravity, you know, continue to move to the upside. We had a similar market, uh, I would say, back in the 1920s. The important thing here, Tommy, is we're looking at a monthly time frame chart, and those blue um, those blue numbers at the bottom. Those are showing consecutive moves lower out there, and we can see that uh, once we got beyond the twenty, once, once we got into nineteen twenty-five, all moves were two consecutive bars to the downside. So the buying opportunity, uh, if one was not inside the market at that time, was to in essence wait for a two-month pullback out there, uh, and that's okay. what's represented. And uh, uh, the uh, the red numbers up on the top of black digits out there, which is really unusual, is nine consecutive higher closes on a monthly basis. You just don't wow. see that too often out here, probably more so in the NASDAQ, Tommy, than we would inside the Dow. But the point sure. is, this was in 1920s. And even during that gigantic rally, we still had um, uh, time periods where the market moved back for two years. So what I've done here is this is a chart that uh, the folks over at Seasonix provide me. And this tool allows me here. I've selected 1921 through 1929. So we're going from January till the end of the year. And this shows what the how the market actually traded during that average eight year period of time. And just simply again, this just reiterates what I said on that first slide out there is that we're not expecting I wouldn't be expecting the market to just simply move in one direction. In fact, when you get two months, when you get a pullback of two months, that's a pretty nice pullback out there. Now, this is a weekly chart. 
And this weekly chart go, takes us back to September 1921. I wanted to understand what kind of pattern was present when the market was making a low. And the market was generating what I refer to as a Rhodes Mintum Indicator Bottom. As you know, that's uh, something that all subscribers get access to. I teach people about this. You don't necessarily need the automated tool like I've got in my charts in order to identify these. What we can also see here on a weekly basis, we talked about the monthly charts forming two consecutive monthly uh, closes to the downside, and that set up the next rally uh, out inside the markets. Here we can see that uh, on a weekly basis, we had a couple of different roads meant to indicator bottom patterns out there. Now, how important are those bottoms? If I just take a bar chart and I go back into this starts in the 1930s out here. If you take a look at the bottom out there, you'll see where these patterns actually form. And they identify pretty significant buying opportunities out there. So I'd say that the weekly bottom patterns, now that just takes us from the uh, 30s into the 50s out there. So if we go from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, we can see this pattern here that's also formed. It's a very specific formula out there. So it's not just the matter that the pattern forms. It's a very specific formula uh, that gets confirmed with a bullish or and a tops uh, bearish reversal candles. Here, if we take a look at the last 25 years, we can see that this signal has been present at every major bottom, the most recent one being the October 2022 weekly Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom pattern for the Dow Jones. Now, just out of, I don't think it's coincidence, but when we take a look at the October 27th, the most recent bottom that we had, Tommy, on a daily time frame, that was also a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal that had identified that bottom. So this is a really great pattern uh, for folks to uh, learn. It, uh, it's applicable to all time frames, even intraday charting out there. Now, even though uh, uh, when I take a look at what's going on right now in the Dow, it's up 92 points. And here, the Dow itself, so just focus on the, the Dow actually has a daily topping pattern out there. It happens to be the Rhodes Mintum Indicator Top. And it is present, Tommy, on the daily equity future contract, the daily cash index, and the uh, Dow Jones Industrial. So everybody can really follow this. On the Dow Diamonds, it's 387.78. That's the number to watch. If price close above that, this pattern gets negated and really talks about a strong further move to the upside. Inside the cash industry, it's 38.7, 38.62. And on the equity future contract, 38.892. Those are the levels to be watching out there. If we take a look at the Dow's weekly and monthly charts, that's what we have here, Tommy, on the right-hand side. They're in what I see just a breakout bullish condition. So what this tells me that if we do get some kind of top and a pullback inside the Dow, that the uh, like a two month a two month move lower is likely not in the equation as we speak uh, right now. So what I want folks to really understand is that uh, and this is even since the October 2023 bottom, Tommy, and how these numbers just pop up. This is a daily time frame charts. Here the pullbacks have each been two or three consecutive moves lower before price moved higher out there. So today might just be. Um, well, I don't know what to, this was. This was taken on, uh, so, on yesterday, so I don't. It's not, clearly we're trading higher inside the Dow. But uh, well, so as you I said it for you, I got the diamonds at three eighty-seven, eighty-seven. So we're oh, right oh, there, yeah. man, which is pretty uh, amazing. Yeah, Steve, so, I appreciate. You bet, you bet. I appreciate it, folks. Head on over. Mastering Probability is right on the front page of TFNN.com right now. You can check out Steve's outstanding newsletter for 149 bucks, and it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can't go wrong. Steve, thanks so much, man. We look forward to the show tomorrow.